Good morning, everyone. Here I am going to record a lecture on carrier generation and recombination. This is in the continuation of the my last lecture that is based on band gap semiconductor materials and different type of intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor materials. So, what we are going to deal here is about the recombination and generation techniques. So, the recombinations are how electrons and holes are produced or created in a particular uh, crystal lattice, how electrons and holes are destroyed or remo removed or we can say that it is a recombination process. So, in the generation process electrons and holes are created, they are uh, created under the process of some thermal vibrations or some thermal excitations and in the recombination process electrons and holes are recombined and they will uh, give you an idea about how they are recombining and produce something that is a form of the light or something else. So, at equilibrium we have rate of recombination is equal to rate of generation which is shown here that is R is equal to G and since the generation rate is set by the temperature we can write as R is equal to G thermal. So, the concept of generation and recombination you can see from the figure here that uh, the electron is at the valence band and uh, there will be some emission of light or uh, excitation of light in the valence band and they will jump into the conduction band. So, from the conduction band it will come down to valence band and it will release some form of energy that is H nu. So, we have the generation and recombination techniques that are in parallel to each other and they are uh, complementary to each other you can say. So, earlier the electrons at the uh, bottom stage that is at the valence band it absorbs some light and it will go to uh, conduction band and uh, in the, that, that is the process of generation of electron and in the recombination process what will happening the electrons in the conduction band will come to valence band and it will release energy in the form of H nu. So, the gen generation and recombination we have uh, basically used in a form of the lasers. So, in the lasers what will we will have we have electrons in the valence band and they will absorb some form of light and they will jump to uh, conduction band. So, this uh, technique in by which we excite a light onto the electron in the valence band is called pumping. So, with the help of this pumping electrons will move from valence band to conduction band and uh, in the in the case of the laser that is light uh, amplification by stimulated emission and radiation, we have the electrons in the conduction band, it, it will move spontaneously uh, in the valence band or it will move stimulatedly in the valence band. So, there are two types of techniques, the first one is a spontaneous emission and the second one is a stimulated emission. So, we have in the spontaneous emission, the electrons will come down to the valence band by its own, we do not require any external energy or force to make it to come down, but in the case of the stimulated emission we require some form of energy, some form of photon energy or some excitation to make it move from conduction band to valence band. So, that will uh, uh, give you some light in the form of the light uh, the photon will come out from the emission process. So, the lasers have both these techniques stimulated and spontaneous. On the other hand LEDs which are also light emitting diodes they have only one uh, technique which is based on spontaneous emission. So, next we can see from this slide that generation and recombination, generation is basically breakup of covalent bonds to form electrons and holes. So, basically when we are, uh, when uh, there is a generation of electron hole pair, there is breakup of covalent bonds to form electrons and holes. Earlier the electron and holes are in the form of the light, but when they break up their bonds, they will create electron and hole pair generation which is also known as EHP generation or EH pair generation. Electron hole pair generation requires energy in the following forms. There are three types of energy, first one is the thermal energy which is basically thermal generation or excitation. The second one is the optical energy which is optical generation and excitation and the last is the external sources example part particle bombardment etcetera. So, in the thermal energy what we have, we have some thermal excitations, th some thermal vibrations and due to which there is generation of the electron hole pair. In the case of optical generation excitation, obviously there is breaking of the bonds in the lattice structure and there will be generation of electron and hole pair. 
On the other hand, there are some external sources by which we can generate electron and hole pair if we are bombarding some particle onto the crystal lattice. So, when we are uh, bombarding any particle onto the crystal lattice, the electron hole pair which is in the form of the light inside the crystal lattice that will break up and uh, there will be two separate entities you will get in the lattice structure. So, these separate entities are electron and holes. The second thing is the recombination. So, recombination as the word suggests that recombining both these uh, entities that is electron and hole pair. So, recombination is formation of bonds by bringing together electron and holes. So, we have to bring uh, electron and holes together and they will combine to form or produce a light. So, release energy in the thermal or optical form as we have discussed that it will whenever the electron and hole pair uh, combine it will release energy in the form of optical or in the form of light that is basically h nu or we can write that E g is equivalent to h nu or energy will be equivalent to uh, h into nu. Next is the recombination event requires one electron and one hole. So, there is basic requirement of the recombination that there must be one electron and one hole. There is a very famous uh, uh, process which is known as electroluminescence. So, in the electroluminescence phenom phenomena which is basically occur in the LEDs light emitting diodes, we have electron hole pair recombination there. So, whenever the different electron hole pair one electron one hole is recombining then another electron ele another hole is recombining and when these pairs are uh, recombined they will produce some light, but these light are not directional light as in the case of the laser we have the directional light, the unidirectional light. In the case of LED it is not a directional light, it is light coming out from overall all the surfaces of the structure. Okay. So, uh, in the we have uh, we can see that in the generation process we have electron and hole pair generation or breakup of covalent bonds. Uh, that will give you a pair of electron and hole pair. So, this phenomena occurs only in the case of the detector where we require the electric energy in the receiver. So, in the receiver whenever we require electric energy, so in the detector what we will do in the detector the light is falling on the detector and it will create electron hole pair. That is why the output we will get there is in the form of the electrical energy. So, Firstly, we have to convert if we, if we take up uh, example of a, a laser or a LED, firstly what we have to do a laser is emitting light and it will pass through a channel and it will received by a receiver. So, in the laser there is recombination of electrons and hole pairs uh, are there and that is why the light is emitted from the laser. On the other hand in the detector what we what, what is going on the light is falling on the detector and electron hole pair is generating. So, there the conversion of optical energy into electrical energy occurs in the detector. In the laser there is a conversion of electrical energy to optical energy is there. So, next what we have uh, discussed that what are the different forms of uh, electron hole pair generation as we have discussed thermal energy or thermal excitation or vibrations, optical energy, optical generation or excitations or any other external sources like particle bombardment and or any other thing. In the recombination process we have release of energy in the form of the optical that is in the form of H nu or a, basically a recombination event only occurs when there is one electron and one hole pair is available in the crystal lattice. So, in the electroluminescence phenomena there are several electrons and hole pairs recombined and they will produce some light. So, next we have the process is showing here that is the first is the gen carrier uh, which is which are, which are carriers are basically are electrons and holes. There are two processes that is first one is a recombination and the second one is a generation. So, in the first diagram we have shown that the electrons is in the conduction band and uh, holes in the valence band and there will be a recombination process occur and electric uh, light will be emitted from the uh, recombination process. In the second example we have the electron in the valence band and holes in the conduction band and the electron will move from valence band to conduction band and they will absorb some light. Obviously, in the valence band which is the lowest energy level the electrons have to absorb some light to get into excited to a higher energy level. 
So in generation process, charge carriers jump from lower energy level to a higher energy level, which I have discussed. So in the generation process, charge carriers jump from lower energy level to higher energy level by taking energy from any external source. This process is called pumping. In recombination process, carriers jump from the higher energy level to lower energy level and it releases energy in the form of the light. So mean lifetime is called as carrier lifetime somewhere in the in between the conduction band or in the valence band or in terms of energy levels we can say that the lower energy level and the higher energy level we have a meta stable state so in uh, mean time li uh, lifetime is called the carrier lifetime which is defined as a time taken by the carrier to stay in the conduction band or in the higher energy level so mean lifetime is called the carrier lifetime which is defined as a time taken by the charge carriers from the process of generation to recombination. So, sometimes there are some meta stable states in the form in the uh, examples of uh, three level laser systems or a four level laser systems. There are four levels or three levels as you can see here in the diagram it is only two level system. So, the two level systems have only one uh, energy level in the uh, lower uh, energy level which is called as E1 and the higher energy level is called E2. But when, whenever there are three level system lasers or four level system in between there are two more uh, levels where the electrons are uh, can stay and uh, the recombination process is much higher as compared to the two level system and the release of energy is also much higher as compared to two level system. So, we use a uh, four level system or three level system for getting higher outputs, higher light outputs as in the as uh, which is not possible in the case of the two level systems. So, here is a example which is showing here that is it is a bar of semiconductor we can see the charge change in current density j from x to x plus dx. So, that in the dx region the process of generation and recombination can be seen easily uh, also a is the area of the semiconducting bar. So, in this uh, semiconducting bar we have uh, generation and uh, recombination process we have current density which we have already defined in the previous lectures that current density j is equal to i by a and we have defined the carrier mo mobility that the, the carrier mobility in terms of drift and diffusion currents. So, here the carriers will move or drift or diffused in the semiconductor bar. Uh, it can contact the electrons will can contact with the holes or uh, there will be a splitting of the covalent bonds also. So, whenever the electron and hole pair combine there will be recombination process occur and there will be emission of uh, light and whenever there is a uh, carrier uh, that is electrons and hole pairs generate there will be a recombi uh, there will be a emission of electrical energy in, in the is in the form of the electrical energy. So, we have j x and j x plus d x j x is the current density at the uh, distance x and j x plus d x is the current density at the distance x plus d x. We have the total area of the semiconductor bar is defined as a and uh, dx is the length of the small length of the uh, semiconductor bar we are taking off. So, gx current density at x, jx plus dx is the current density at uh, a small particular region that is taking care of uh, contributing to the current density. We have uh, g which is called as generation, we have r which is called as recombination and we have applied a voltage. Uh, anode positive voltage to a particular one side of the semiconductor bar and the second side of the semiconductor bar with the negative. So, there will be a movement of the electrons from negative to positive side or movement of holes from positive to negative side. Whenever there is a movement, there will be a recombination occurs of electrons and holes and there can be a splitting of the covalent bonds also can occur that is that will give you the generation of electron and hole pair which is very useful in the case of the detecting a particular light. So, in the in the case of the detectors we, we see that uh, whenever the light falls on a detector it will uh, convert into an electrical form of energy and this energy we can use in various applications or we can amplify these energy at the receiver also. So, next we have excess carriers. So, the process of generation and recombination results in production of excess carriers in the semiconductors. Uh, these processes which is which we are we are calling as generation and recombination it results in production of the various excess carriers in the semiconductors. Here dn by dt is the rate of the change of electrons with uh, time. 
dp by dt is defined as rate of change of holes with time g dash is the new generation rate we are defining here g not is the original generation rate we are defining here r is the recombination rate the earlier recombination rate r dash is the new recombination rate here uh, new generation of electrons and holes are equal so g n dash is equivalent to gp dash similarly original electron generation and electron and hole pair generation recombinations are equal so here j g n not is equivalent to gp not similarly recombinations of electrons and holes are equal which is rn is equivalent to rp so these are some terminology by which we can see that how the excess carriers are uh, created in the combination recombination process or in the generation process uh, the in the recombination process we have electron hole pair recombining and in the generation process we have electron so we have excess carrier generation and recombination in this slide in non equilibrium we have this relationship that is dn by dt is equivalent to dp by dt is equivalent to g dash which is the new generation rate plus g not original generation rate minus r which is the recombination rate which is which is the original recombination rate is equivalent to g dash minus r dash so, so this equation will give you an idea about how many electrons and hole pairs are generating and how many are recombining. So, this will give you the overall electron and hole concentration in a particular crystal, uh, silicon crystal. So, dn by dt will give you the electron concentration and dp by dt will gi give you the uh, hole concentration with respect to time. So, that will give you g dash uh, which is the uh, new generation rate obviously generation rate minus recombination rate will give you the total concentration, but here we have some original generation rate, some original recombination rate and also new generation and new recombination rate. So, by, we, by that we I have written this equation in the form of uh, generation and recombination rate. So, a steady state generation process will not cause a continual build up of the carrier concentration. We have uh, in the diagram you can see that the valence band has the number of holes, hole concentration with respect to time which is dp by dt. The conduction band we have dn by dt, the electron concentration with respect to time and there is a process by which electron will move from valence band to conduction band. So, this is this is the process of generation process. So, g dash is a new generation rate we know uh, g n dash is for the holes and gp dash for the holes and g n dash for the electrons. So, here g n dash is equivalent to g p dash. Similarly, uh, for g n naught and g p naught which is the original generation rates are also equal and it will give you the original generation rate which is equivalent to g naught. The first one is the uh, uh, new generation rate and the second one is the original generation rate and the third one is the recombination rate. So, here r n is equivalent to r p number of electrons uh, for the recombination is equivalent to number of holes for the recombination and this will give you an overall idea about how the recombination and generation will take care in the form of the electrons and hole pair combinations or splitting of the electron and hole pairs. So, next we have the Poisson's equations. So, the Poisson's equation is basically give you an idea about how the divergence of the electrons and holes will occur or the charge density will occur. So, there is a formula which is del dot e is equivalent to rho by epsilon, where del dot e will give you day by e by day by x, which is electric field with respect to x. So, the electric field at a position x, y, z is related to the charge density that is equivalent to rho or q and we have already uh, read in the previous lecture that is the donor concentration and the acceptor concentration. So, we have written here N d minus N a, which is the donor concentration minus n a which is the acceptor concentration minus the total number of holes already available in the semiconductor lattice minus the total number of electrons already available in the semiconductor lattice. So, already available electrons and holes plus some donor atoms minus some acceptor atoms will give you the overall charge density which is defined by rho. So, rho is equivalent to q into this uh, equation this term and with the help of the Poisson equation we can write del dot e is equivalent to rho by epsilon, where epsilon is the permittivity in the uh, vacuum and uh, epsilon or in the medium epsilon is equivalent to epsilon naught epsilon r and it is around 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 farad per centimeter. The value of the epsilon r for the case of the silicon is given by 11.7. 
So, this del dot E will give you the divergence or the uh, dot product of del with electric field and it will give you the idea about how the electric field varies with the uh, particular direction that is the electric field with x or electric field with y or electric field with z in the case of the and it is also related with the charge density. So, electric field is related with the charge density will give you the thing about the Poisson's equation and it will uh, tell you the value of the del dot E which is equivalent to rho by E. So, in the Poisson's equations we have there are numerous terms that is first term is n is equal to n naught plus del n where n is the overall concentration n naught is the uh, original concentration del n is the change in the concentration of the electron similarly p is the overall concentration means the total concentration which contributes which have both the terms that is the initial concentration of the uh, holes plus del p in non equilibrium state. For n type material we have uh, obviously for n type we have already read that the donor impurities are uh, dominating over the accepted impurities that is why n is equal to nd minus na which is greater than 0 n naught is equal to n and nd minus na is equal plus p minus n which is basically the total overall uh, charge density in a uh, in the case of when whenever there is a more donor impurities as compared to the acceptor impurities. So, n naught is equal to n and n d minus n a plus p minus n which gives you an overall value of minus del n plus del p plus n i square by n. So, for p type material we have the other thing that is acceptor type impurity is much greater than donor type impurity and that is why n is equal to n d minus n a is always less than 0 because it has a negative value. So, P naught is equal to minus n for the case of the P type material and N d minus N a plus P minus n is equal to del P plus minus del n minus N i square upon n will give you the overall value of the uh, P naught. So, neglecting n square by n terms in both the equations we have del dot E is equal to rho by f silent uh, multiplied by del P minus del n for n type and p type material with del p or del n is not equal to 0. So, in the case of the n type material we have del p minus rho p del p minus del n and in the case of the p type material we'll, we have uh, del n minus del p. So, next we have the continuity equation. So, previous equations are used for steady state uh, conditions or for steady state analysis. Continuity equation deals with time dependent phenomena such as low level injections, generations and recombination. So, here the net change of the charge co uh, carrier concentration is the difference between generation and the recombination plus the net current flowing in, in or out of the region of the interest. So, we have this diagram showing the current density at x and current density at x plus dx for a semiconductor bar which has a small length of del x the area of this semiconductor bar is A. So, the rate equations for holes and rate equations for electrons we can write in the form of the continuity equation. So, the rate equations of, of holes is equal to del P by del T is equal to 1 minus Q J P X minus J P X plus del X in the same way as we have earlier done that is for the case of the Poisson's equations uh, divided by del X minus del P upon T tau P plus G P. So, here we have uh, del P by del T which is the concentration of the holes uh, with respect to time. J P and J P x plus d x is the current density at x and current density at x plus d x so for a small value of del x minus del P upon tau P which is the uh, basically generation recombination rates which will recombine uh, electrons and hole pair and it will give you like. So, that will be subtracted from the entire term plus some generation of electrons and hole pairs. So, that will be additional terms. So, that is plus G p. So, with this continuity equation you can see that how the equations are evolved in the form of the current density minus some uh, recombination rate plus some generation rate. So, in the same way we can write for the holes also. So, these rate equations will give you an idea about how the uh, net ch uh, change of the carrier concentration is there how the carrier concentration is uh, used in the form of the recombination and rate and generation rate. That is why uh, it is written like this for the generation plus minus recombination. Also we can say that rate of hole concentration built up how the hole concentration is building up into the valence band is equivalent to increase of hole concentration in area 
multiplied by delta x per unit time minus recombination rate plus generation rate. So, this overall give you the continuity equation. We will see into the details of the continuity equation in the later on lectures. So, we have this uh, continuity equation earlier we have seen Poisson's equation and uh, carrier recombination and uh, generation. So, with this I am concluding today's lecture that uh, the recombinations and generations are very important as in the case of the laser which we which we are uh, seeing from the starting of the first lecture that we have to design some lasers or some LEDs and for that we have used third and fifth group element. So, there the generation and recombination process is very much influential because if if there is no generation and recombination, there will be no evolution evolution of the light or emission of the light here. So next last we have p-n junction. So the we already know about how the p-n junction is working. The condition when there is a combination of p-type layer and n-type layer, then it will result a form of formation of the p-n junction. We have a n-type semiconductor. We have a p-type semiconductor. And the space charge carrier region is in between the P and N type semiconductor. In the case of optical, we have we can uh, say like this this region is called as active region. So, the space charge region or depletion layer uh, is, is in the case of the uh, P n junction. The P n junction is provided with a voltage supply with a positive volt to P type and uh, a negative volt to N type. Whenever the positive is connected to P type and N negative is connected to N type, it will become into forward biased. And whenever the negative is connected with the p type and positive is connected with the n side, it will uh, come into a uh, reversed bias condition. So, junction is the point of contact of the two semiconducting layers we have. So, here the diagram is showing all over the thing that is there is a two type uh, p type and n type semiconductor which we have uh, created with the help of the p type impurities or the n type impurities we are added into the original semiconductor. And then we created a p-n junction type region. So the space charge region, which is depletion layer, has minority carriers and uh, some of the immobile carriers. So the p side have the more number of holes, the n side have the uh, more number of electrons. And when we connect the p type semiconductor to positive and n side to uh, negative, the there will be a change. There will be a attractive forces uh, act towards the uh, uh, electrodes that is positive and n, uh, n type for negative and there will be a, uh, a depletion layer will goes on keeps on decreasing. So, there will be a movement of charge carriers from across the p n junction. So, this is all about the p n junction we have this uh, we will continue this p n junction and the continuity equation in the later on uh, lectures and we will see how the p n junction will work in the form of the uh, uh, carrier recombination and uh, generation because in the lasers we have the same uh, structure like this p n junction only the thing is different that we have to use the third fifth group elements or the second or fourth group elements to make to form a laser uh, structure or semiconductor injection laser. So, the semiconductor injections lasers are formed through these type of third or fifth group elements which are different from something from the p n junction, but the actual thing is the same that the uh, we uh, supply a voltage to these uh, particular uh, phases of the p n junction in the same way we supply the voltage to semiconductor injection lasers and there will be some formation of uh, electron hole pair or there will be some generation of electron hole pair. So, we will see that how the generation of electron hole pair will uh, give you an effective or uh, influential uh, emission of light in the case of the lasers also. So, thank you so much we will uh, meet you in the next.